Rangers hockey is in full swing, and we are doing a very special mailbag edition featuring your stories from last year's playoff run. You're locked on the New York Rangers, your daily podcast on the New York Rangers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back, Blue Shirts fans, to episode number 1165 of the Locked On New York Rangers podcast. I'm your host, John Chick. Just want to thank you guys, as always, for making Locked On New York Rangers your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms, including YouTube. And today's episode of Locked On New York Rangers is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NHL for $20 off your first purchase. And we are, of course, part of the Locked On Podcast Network your team every day. So we're finally going to do an episode that I've been trying to get to for quite some time. We were going to do it right before the start of the NHL season, but uh, then we had all that Igor Shesterkin drama. I had to do a couple episodes about that, and that's kind of an ongoing thing ever since. Um, but today, I wanted to finally get to it. These are going to be uh, your stories in a special mailbag edition of Locked on New York Rangers, your stories from last year's playoff run, specifically anything that happened to you uh, during one of the Ranger overtime wins, you know, where were you? Who were you with? How did you celebrate? And we got some good stories here, some funny stories, some heartwarming stories. Going to just go ahead and read them all to you guys. And then uh, at some point, a little bit later in the episode, I'll share uh, my personal story as well. And just like you guys, I'll pick just one of the four games to, to go with. Uh, but let's go ahead and start here with Ryan. Everyday listener here, my nine-month-old son Cameron got to see his first New York Rangers overtime winner against the Panthers in Game 3 on the shot by Ryan Lindgren favorite player and deflected by Alex Wenberg. He was asleep for the, for the, okay, let's try that again. He was asleep for the other overtime winners. So to be able to share that experience with him was priceless. We're a big Rangers family. And to have that experience with my wife, Allie, son, Cameron, and myself is just one of those things that you will never forget. Big fan of the show. Thank you for taking the time. Well, thank you for listening to the show. Thank you for uh, sharing that story. I do have a question though. You said uh, Ryan Lindgren, and then you said in parentheses, favorite player. Is that your favorite player or your son's favorite player? Maybe both. Uh, Ryan Lindgren's awesome. I'm a big fan of him as well. I know kind of facing an uncertain future, but um, great to see him, you know, come through in that moment. And uh, Alex Wemberg getting to the front of the net and deflecting at home. Uh, just awesome stuff. And this is a story that I can really relate to. I'll spoil it. I'm going to tell a story about uh, this very game a little bit later in today's episode and uh, my daughter being in the room as well. But uh, that that's just awesome stuff. It's always cool to hear, uh, you know, memories that you make while watching the Rangers with your family. Just very cool. Uh, we got a story here from Palmer. Hey, John, this is Palmer from Puck Rock Rangers. I wanted to share my overtime game-winning goal story from last postseason. So my brother-in-law lives directly in front of our home, and they have a swimming pool. They ha Oh, boy. <laughs> they, they happen to be out of town at the time, and with their permission, I took a swim as I streamed the rest of Game 3 on my phone. I got in the pool as the second period ended, and the Rangers were up 4-2. to two. Vibes were good, and I was joking to myself that I was celebrating with a Florida-style pool party. As you all know, my refreshing dip soon turned nerve-wracking as the Rangers blew their two-goal lead and barely held on to head into overtime. So I'm in the water pacing back and forth, eyes glued to my phone, waiting for the puck to drop. Five and a half minutes into overtime, we get a deflection goal off the shaft of Alex Wenberg's stick. Before this, it seemed as though he might have been cursed, but the puck was in and the pressure released. The boys won it, and I can enjoy the rest of my Florida pool party of one and then walk back home pounding my chest. Sadly, we all know what happened next and that this would end up being the last bit of magic from the 2023-24 run. But in that moment, pure elation, the cup was in sight. Kudos to Florida for a hell of a series and cup run, I guess. Let's go Rangers. Win it this year for Sam. Uh, yeah, absolutely win it this year for Sam. We, we got to send Sam out a champ. You know, I, I know a lot of us were kind of focused in on, um, you know, all the parallels between 1994 and 2024. And obviously they're 30 years apart and uh, you know, the Rangers won their first seven games in 94 in the playoffs, and they did the same thing this year. And that's all well and good and everything. But I do believe in this Ranger team. I, I do believe, you know, they have the group to get it done and a uh, slightly better team, I would say, this year than they had at this time last year. So we'll see. And by the way, uh, I wanted to throw this out there as well. Palmer is one half of the uh, hosts. He, he's got a co-host of Puck Rock Rangers. Definitely give them a listen or a watch. They're on YouTube. Very easy to, you know, find the show. Just type in Puck Rock Rangers. Uh, they have a focus on the Rangers, also NHL news, and a little bit of punk and underground music news as well. So just a very interesting show. I've watched it a couple times myself, and i uh, got to get caught up. Got to gotta watch the, the newest episode of Puck Rock Rangers for sure. Uh, we got another Ranger podcast writing in for us today. Double defense podcast to be exact. 
Uh, I'm not sure which member of double defense wrote this, but we'll go ahead and read it anyway. Rangers versus Panthers game three. Double defense had literally just arrived in Florida as we had tickets to game four. Watched most of game three on the flight. Thanks, United Wi-Fi. And landed just as regulation was coming to an end. Went straight from the airport to Yard House across from Amaranth Arena in Sunrise, Florida. The place was packed with Panthers fans. So we got a bit of the evil eye as we rocked up in our Rangers jerseys and our suitcases. We literally found the one other Rangers fan in the bar and got to celebrate the Rangers win in overtime. A few minutes later, the game let out and the place was flooded with Ranger fans. We celebrated the rest of the afternoon with our new friends, including the awesome Eds from the Rangers Ed podcast who had been at the game. A shame they didn't win game four, which we were at, but it was truly a great experience to share that win in Florida with new friends. Yeah, that must have been uh, something else, having to take your suitcases to the bar. I mean, I've I, I've been in a situation like that where, like, you know, you, you're lugging your suitcase around with you and, and you just want to get rid of it and get to the hotel and everything. But you got to do what you got to do. And obviously, you know, that game was still ongoing. They're in overtime. I'm glad you got to see the overtime game winner, obviously surrounded by Panthers fans. You know, that's something that I haven't done with hockey as much as I have with football. You guys can let me know about this, too. When you go into a stadium, but you're rooting for the away team. I've done it a couple times. You know, we, me and my wife have gone to see the Rangers play at the Islanders, but that's like half Ranger fans. Um, then again, if you're seeing a Ranger game in Florida, it's probably the same deal. It's probably about half Ranger fans there too, but that can be a lot of fun. You, you got to behave yourself, you know, don't antagonize people, but you know, I'm a 49er fan in football. I've never seen them play a home game in person. I've probably seen them about six or seven times on the road. So that's always quite the experience. And obviously, uh, Double defense first in the bar and then actually in the Panthers arena, you know, surrounded or mostly surrounded by Panther fans with just a couple of Ranger fans here and there. Always uh, somewhat scary, but also an exciting experience when you're rooting for the team that, you know, everybody else is, is rooting against. But uh, going to keep everything rolling in just a second. We've got a couple other stories, a couple other people that were actually at some of these games that we're talking about, these overtime winners. Uh, so I'm very, very jealous of all of uh, all of you that were actually at these games that the Rangers won. Very cool stuff. But we'll get to their stories, a couple other stories about, you know, people watching the Rangers with their family uh, when some of these games in overtime as well. So we'll get to all that fun stuff in just a second. All right, we just want to take a minute to let everybody know that today's episode of Locked On New York Rangers is brought to you by Game Time. Game Time has a new feature called Game Time Picks that makes getting tickets for your favorite live events even faster and even easier. Game Time Picks filters out the fluff to show you only incredible deals on great seats so that you do not have to waste time searching through thousands and thousands of tickets. You've got Game Time Picks. Curation makes it easier to save more on sports, concerts, comedy, theater, etc., all in pricing. Toggling this feature shows the total up front with no surprise fees at checkout. Seat views. Get a panoramic view from your seat in the app before you buy, and the lowest price guarantee or Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app. Create an account and use code LOCKEDONNHL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code LOCKEDONNHL for $20 off. Download game time today. What time is it? It is game time. And today's episode of Locked On New York Rangers is also brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the best place to get real money sports action with over 10 million members and billions of dollars in awarded winnings. Prize Picks has made daily fantasy sports accessible to all. You just pick more or less on at least two players for a shot to win up to 100 times your cash. Run your game all season long on Prize Picks. You can now win up to 100 times your money on Prize Picks with as little as four correct picks. Prize Picks is the best way to get action on sports in over 30 states, including California, Florida, Georgia, and Texas. Download the app today and use code Locked On NHL to get $50 instantly after you play your first $5 lineup. Once again, download the app today and use code Locked On NHL to get $50 instantly after you play your first $5 lineup. All right, let's go ahead and keep everything rolling here on this very special mailbag edition of Locked On New York Rangers, reading all your stories from, uh, you know, obviously uh, the, the Rangers playoff run last year, more specifically all the overtime winners uh, that the Rangers were fortunate enough to get during that run. I'm uh, going to keep everything ro rolling here with a story from Derek. Derek says, hey, John, I live in Charlotte, North Carolina. My friend who is a Canes fan and I went to game three in Raleigh 
when Panarin scored the overtime winner. It was such an intense game. We tailgated prior to the game. Luckily, there was plenty of Rangers fans tailgating as well. We got on TV after Kreider scored from the Mika Pass. Nice. That's awesome. Uh, when Panarin scored in overtime, I freaked out after that and had no clue who it was that had scored. All I knew was that the Rangers had won. It wasn't until I was walking out that I asked a Rangers fan who had scored the goal. It was a great game, but an unfortunate drive back for my friend. Well, it is what it is, man. You know, you go to a game and you want one team to win. Your friend wants the other team to win. You can't both leave happy. And I'm glad you got that win. It's crazy watching these games because I remember, you know, that game's going into overtime. And, oh, man, here we go again. Another another tight game with the Canes, right? And the Raiders were up two games to nothing. And despite that, like, I'm still on pins and needles watching this. Because you just, you never know what can happen. And we saw that that ended up being true. Because, obviously, Rangers went up three games to none in that series. Uh, the Canes won the next two. They had a two-goal lead in game six. And then Chris Kreider did what he did uh, to send the Rangers to the conference final. But, uh, yeah, man, you can just never take your foot off the gas. And even when your team has a series lead, there's still that sense of urgency, even as a fan, that, like, my God, they got to win this game. So I'm glad uh, I'm glad you got to go to that game, see basically an instant classic. And, um, yeah, Panarin scoring on the deflection, great way to, uh, to end that one and uh, to send you home happy and your friend not so happy. Uh, we got Joe from the Wolfpack. He says, hello, John. Last year was an amazing run that unfortunately ended prematurely. I am bunking the rules a little bit here because the experience I wanted to talk about was game six against the Carolina Hurricanes. That's cool. We'll do this for a little bit of variety. Uh, months before the game, I reserved two tickets for a play for my wife and I. Unfortunately, a, a play. Come on, man. A play. Uh, unfortunately, it landed on the aforementioned game six. She had been looking forward to it for weeks, so there was no backing out. The show was roughly three hours and was going to eclipse the game from start to finish. Knowing I have rabid Ranger fans, excuse me, knowing I have rabid Ranger friends and a family group chat full of hockey fanatics plus game notifications turned on, the only way to not spoil it was to go into airplane mode. Fast forward to the end of the show. I know if I reconnect my phone to the world, the results would flood my device. So I had my wife look up the freshly uploaded highlights. In the process of finding the video, my wife saw the results and loudly exclaimed, oh my, I knew I was in for something. So there I, so there we were in a cold car, holding up a phone, watching the condensed game down to 10 minutes or so, living and dying with every strung together clip, trying to glean any bit of information I could get out of each sequence. The fear of the reverse sweep was becoming more and more pronounced. And when Martin Hook saved the goal, I was starting to enter a dark place. The only thing I could hang my slim thread of hope on was that when the third period started, there was still over half the video remaining. That is true. You kind of know the game flow. Like if you haven't watched a game and you watch a highlight video, uh, you can kind of judge how crazy or uncrazy, you know, the, the rest of the game was by how much time is left in the video. But anyway, to continue on here, something must have happened. And boy, did it. A natural hat trick for Kreider, a legacy period to cement his place in the Ranger Raptors and a Ranger classic that will be remembered for decades. That car was shaking and it wasn't anything nefarious. Uh, thanks for taking the time to listen to my story. Let's go Rangers and to my cousin, Steven. Good luck in Ohio. I'm jealous of the cheap tickets, ticket prices you will pay to see the Rangers. Yeah, sounds like uh, his cousin might be going to some Blue Jackets games. And uh, yeah, I would imagine they're infinitely less expensive to see the Rangers in Columbus than they are to see the Rangers in the Garden, but it is what it is. And thanks for that story there, uh, Joe. It really, really uh, appreciate you sending that in. Uh, interesting way to uh, to find out the Rangers in advance, but I'm, I'm glad it worked out uh, for you nevertheless. Uh, also a story here from Daniel. Quick story from Daniel. Trojic winning the double overtime game against his former team. You can just sense the aura and that he doesn't care if he made his old teammates sad that they lost. He feels so right at home with the Rangers. Yeah, that's an interesting point. I mean, look, I'm sure Trocek, you know, he was with the Canes for, I think it was like three and a half years or two and a half years. He went over midway through this season or that season, uh, traded from the Panthers to the Canes. I don't remember if it was like three and a half years that he spent there or what it was, but uh, somewhere in that ballpark. But look, I'm sure he made friends. I'm sure, you know, he uh, still knows a couple of the guys in the Carolina Hurricanes, but too bad. You know, when it's the Stanley Cup playoffs, friendships and even uh, brotherhoods, I think pretty much go out the window. You know, we, we saw some pretty big hits between the Stahl brothers over the years. So um, yeah, it is what it is. But yeah, you make a great point there about Trocek feeling right at home with the Rangers. You know, he obviously started with the Panthers, went on to the Carolina Hurricanes, great player for both teams, but he's just now starting year three with the Rangers. And it feels like this guy was born to be a blue shirt. I mean, it really does. And um, what an amazing season he had last year. And we look for more of the same this year as well. So going to keep everything rolling once again here. 
When we come back, I'm going to share my story uh, of where I was, what I was doing when Alex Wenberg scored the Game 3 overtime winner against the Panthers, and then a couple other stories from you guys as well. A lot of people sharing some stories of uh, you know watching with family and, and things like that. So definitely looking forward to sharing those stories with you guys, and we will do that in just a second. All right, we just want to take a quick minute to let everybody know that today's episode of Locked On New York Rangers is brought to you by FanDuel. Hey, NFL fans, you can start the season with a big return on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. So when you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. You will get started with $200 in bonus bets, guaranteed. When you place your first $5 bet, that is FanDuel.com. All right, let's go ahead and keep everything rolling here on today's special mailbag edition of Locked On New York Rangers. And I figure uh, we'll go ahead. I'll share my story now, and then I'll, I'll end with a couple more uh, from you guys that wrote in. So I'm going to go ahead. Like I said earlier in the episode, I'm going to share my story from Game 3 in the conference final between the Rangers and the Panthers. It was an afternoon game, uh, which is going to be important in just a second. I'll explain why in just a minute here. But to kind of set the stage, first of all, let me just say, watching that game, you know, Barkley Goodrow scores twice. Alexi Lafreniere scores twice. Uh, some highlight real goals by both of them. Uh, I know the ESPN announcers will sometimes leave something to be, be desired, but I thought uh, McDermott had a great call. I think it was this game when Goodrow scored. Goodrow scored one of his goals kind of out of nowhere, and he just goes, what has gotten into Barclay Goodrow? And yeah, no joke. I mean, Barclay Goodrow turned into Wayne Gretzky in the playoffs last season. Um, but anyway, you know, the Rangers go up 4-2 and a couple other people that we've already heard from kind of describe that and all the emotions are going through and you think the Rangers are mostly in the driver's seat. I mean, you can never relax that much because you guys know how the Stanley Cup playoffs can be. Um, but, you know, the Panthers come back. They completely take over the game. They tie it at 4-4. Uh, Igor is standing on his head near the end of regulation to keep the puck out. And that's one of those situations where you're tied 4-4 and there's like three minutes left. There's two minutes left. And I'm thinking, we're all probably thinking this. Just get to overtime. Just get this game to overtime and let's at least reset during the intermission, come back out, find a way to score the win because the Rangers were really back on their heels there. Um, but it goes into overtime and I can't explain why for the life of me, but I had a really, really good feeling about this overtime period. And everything we had just seen in the third period would suggest that I should have felt the opposite way. I don't know if it's just blind optimism. I don't know if uh, I just felt like the Rangers were due to score one. Maybe uh, the fact that they were 3-0 in the playoffs up to that point kind of gave me some hope as well. But I felt really good going into this overtime. And again, I can't put my finger on exactly why, but I was just, the overtime's about to start. I'm like, we're going to win this game. We're, we're going to find a way to win this game. And, you know, back and forth, a couple chances, I guess, each way. And uh, it goes along. And again, this is an afternoon game, and this is why this is important. So like, uh, you know, a, a couple of other people that, you know, we, we've heard from here and uh, just Ranger fans around the world. Ryan shared this story a little bit earlier in today's episode. I also, you know, have a young child. My daughter is now two and a half years old. And, you know, she can't stay up for the late games. I mean, she might be, uh, she might catch like the first couple of minutes, you know, of, of like a seven o'clock start, but that's about it. Um, so because of that, she doesn't get to see a whole lot of the games. And, you know, she's two years old, so she's not going to like lock in and watch every single, you know, play and every possession. I think she's starting to gain like kind of an understanding of the game, at least a little bit. But I've also learned to not yell when it comes to sports. That That is one thing that Father Ed has taught me. So I've really trained myself and done my best to not get, you know, too crazy when these games are going on because I don't want to scare her, right? So Rangers have that offensive zone face-off, and, and, you know, my daughter's sitting on the floor playing with her toys, doing what two-year-olds do, right? Uh, you get the shot by Lindgren, uh, the deflection in front by Wenberg. It goes into the net, and I don't want to yell. So I just, like, as quietly as I could, I just jumped into the air twice, and my wife was there too. I hugged her and we're, neither one of us want to make too much noise and go too crazy. So I just walk over to her and I'm like, Daniela, Daniela. And she looks up and she sees it. And by this point, all the Rangers are on the ice and they're, they're all hugging each other and, you know, cheering and everything. And my daughter loves it when the Rangers hug each other. Like if I show her like a goal, her whole thing is she wants to see them hug. And when they hug, she'll just go, they're hugging. So she did that um, after this playoff overtime winner. I'm like, yeah, they're hugging. It, it was awesome. It, it was just one of those moments that, um, you just love to be able to share with your family. And I think I did a pretty good job not making too much noise because if this was like 10 years ago and the Rangers scored a playoff overtime winner, I mean, I don't care what time it is, afternoon, night, if there's like a morning game somehow, I'm waking up my entire neighborhood and that's all there is to it. But I, I, I found a way to somewhat control myself there and that was probably good for everybody. Uh, all right, so let's keep moving on back to your stories here. We got Michael. 
Hey, John, it's game three of the Florida series. I have my wife and two daughters down in New Jersey visiting my parents. We're all down in the basement watching the game together. Same spot. I watched so many big games as a kid, including the cup win. That's awesome. Uh, earlier in the season in November, I had taken my mom to her first ever game, Rangers at Devils, which was a roller coaster game. If you remember it, a great 5-3 win. She's pretty old now, and I was impressed with how well she followed the action live in person. I'd watched a few games with her recently on TV during visits, and she wasn't always as on top of it. So we're all sitting down as the crazy storyline of Game 3 is unfolding. Nightmare start, of course, with a soft one three minutes in. My mom reacts like it's the end of the world, and also like it's totally unexpected, because for her it is. We have the stud performance from Lafreniere, two obligatory goals from Goodrow, who knows how, and somehow we find ourselves 4-2 up. At this point, my mom is in party mode, thinking order has been restored and everything is right in the with the world. But my 11 and 12-year-old daughters know better. They're dialed in enough to get excited about that second Lafreniere stunner, but also to just laugh and throw their hands up at the Goodrow scoring at all, let alone two in this kind of a game. And they can tell that I'm just holding my breath because that's how I've been for the last month now every game through the playoffs. So they're not at all surprised when Barkoff and then Forsling pull us back down to earth quick. Their grandmother, on the other hand, is befuddled as to how this can be happening to the Rangers. The Wenberg goal is its own crazy anomaly. It really was, man. I think that I think that was his only goal of the playoffs, and I think he got like one in the regular season after the Rangers brought him over. And I know he's a defensive specialist, and you don't expect him to score a lot, but you would expect more than two goals for the amount of games that he played with the Rangers. But anyway, yes, the Wenberg goal is its own crazy anomaly. anomaly. And my kids basically said in unison, Wenberg, are you kidding me? When that one happened, as I slumped back in my chair, feeling like once again, some kind of divine intervention had helped the Rangers along. But by far our funniest moment and our best memory of watching that game together came a few minutes earlier near the start of the overtime. There must have been a whistle because they had cut back to show the forcing goal again. And my mother reacts all over again as if it's happening in real time because she thinks it is. She's just devastated. Oh, no, not again, she shouts. She can't believe this is happening to us, and this is how this game ends. I look over toward her from my chair, exasperated. She's on the verge of tears, honestly. But before I could say anything to her, I see my two girls sitting next to her, look right at each other in disbelief at their grandmother, before looking up at me as if for help. Mom, I sigh. That was just a replay. Both my girls burst out laughing hysterically. My mom, God bless her, locks right back in to keep watching. And Wenberg does the unthinkable a couple minutes later. It was ridiculous, but in the end, a nice way to remember their last win of the season. As it turned out, my kids have been joking about it on and off throughout the summer. Yeah, man, uh, that was such an awesome win, such a big win. And it just sucks that they lost the next three in a row. And of course, all by one goal, all three of those games, I mean, basically every game in this series could have gone either way. I know a lot of people look at game one and, you know, Florida did win that one three or nothing, but it's easy to forget that was a one goal game with like four minutes, five minutes to go. I mean, it, it was really tight. And, you know, a, a lot of people are going to say that it was all the York Shesterka and he had a huge role in it, obviously. But, um, you know, Florida's got a great goalie, too. And uh, the Rangers were in all those games. And I, I just hope they can make it back that far and at least get another shot at this thing and, and hopefully make it farther than that. Uh, we've got one more here from Dennis. Hi, John. First of all, I want to thank you for your daily podcast on the Rangers. You're very, very welcome. Very happy to do this show. Uh, it's a blast. I'm responding to your call out. I'm, I'm responding to your call out for the personal reactions to those overtime winners. Well, I'm German. And because of the time difference, 8 p.m. means 2 a.m. in Germany. I was sitting in my bureau in front of the computer and watching the ESPN stream via IPTV. The door was closed. My family was asleep. Game two and three of the conference final were such nail biters. I was holding my breath and begging for something to happen when finally an eruption took place with Goodrow and Wenberg scoring those overtime winners. In advance, I had placed a pillow beside me. I was grabbing it and screaming loudly several times into it. What a great relief it was. And the funny thing is, even though I was jumping and doing stupid stuff, my wife and daughter were still dreaming of better Rangers times to come. The only bad thing after those games for me is to go to work two hours later. Bad luck when you are a Ranger fan living outside the U.S. Let's go, Rangers. Thanks for reading, John. All the best from Germany. Yeah, you're welcome, man. Uh, thanks for sharing that story. That's awesome. See, I, I can appreciate the fact that you were, you were prepared. 
I've learned to somehow restrain myself when the Rangers score, you know, a playoff overtime win or something crazy happens, you know, regarding sports. And uh, I guess, you know what, if you can't train yourself to not make a, b- a bunch of noise, I think a pillow is a solid plan B there. You yell into that and nobody hears you. Uh, good stuff. Ho- hopefully, uh, hopefully all was good in the household after that. And as far as going to work two hours later, I mean, hey, all you really need is a power nap, right? You know, you just, you knock out for, you know, a quick hour and a half, you get up, you go to work and you do what you got to do. But uh, no, I, I do sympathize for that. You know, I, I guess that kind of puts things into perspective because anytime the Rangers have a late game now, you know, they start a couple of the games on the West Coast at like 10 or 1030. It's like, oh God, I got to stay up for this. Well, that's the norm over there in Germany and, and some other places in the world too, where if you want to watch the Rangers live, you don't really have a choice. You got to do it at some pretty, uh, unconventional hours and uh the fact that it starts at 2 a.m i mean that's just crazy I, I imagine since that game went into overtime i'd imagine the sun was probably coming up by the time it was uh time for you to go to work there but uh yeah listen guys thanks so much for sending in these stories if you didn't do it this time we, we do you know episodes like this every once in a while where i just kind of look for people to send in stories you know of, of things that they did at range attending rangers games watching on tv uh some of the bigger moments in recent ranger history we did one with uh the Derek Stepan Game 7 overtime winner. We did one with the Panarin Game 7 overtime winner. It's just a ton of fun. And uh, these are right up there with, like, you know, my favorite episodes that I've ever done of Locked On Rangers. It's just so cool to hear um, all these stories from, you know, all the different members of the Ranger family. And, and a lot of them are just, you know, very funny, very unique, very heartwarming in some cases as well. So thank you guys for sending these in. And if you didn't do it this time around, we're, we're going to hope that the Rangers make some more classic unforgettable moments this season and hopefully in the playoffs as well. And uh, you can definitely do it the next time. And I'll, I'll definitely read your story on locked on New York Rangers, but I figure we can call it there for today. Once again, if you guys would like to get in touch with this podcast, please send an email to locked on NY Rangers at gmail.com. Once again, that is locked on NY Rangers at gmail.com. Definitely give us a follow on Twitter as well at LO underscore NY underscore Rangers. Once again, that's at LO underscore NY underscore Rangers and definitely subscribe to locked on New York Rangers YouTube channel. Thanks again, guys. I will see you next time.